graduates, so we were talking. The other organizations that existed was uh, Gold, and you had uh, Reverend C. L. Franklin. That was uh, kind of important, a por important part of that. Uh, I think the split took place between the message to the grassroots and the Franklin forces when they left. I think that's detailed in, in Grace's book uh, somewhat. But uh, that was a coalition of activity that came together that year. Um, I had, uh, in the fall of 63, is when uh, I got arrested the first time uh, when we had the demonstration against, against the Olympic Games here in the city of Detroit that uh, the uh, city of Detroit was making a real forward push to get the 68 Olympics here. And uh, what happened was that the city council, we only had one black person on the city council, William Patrick, and uh, they turned down an open occupancy law. So we didn't even have open occupancy law in the city and they tried to bring the Olympic Games here. So they had planned a great big rally downtown. They had, had a torch that had been carried all the way from LA to Detroit and they had a, the police band downtown to whip up the crowd to try to, they were gonna film this thing and send it over to the Olympic Committee in Germany to show them how bad the people wanted, Detroiters wanted the Olympics. And we fucked it up. Man, we fucked it up. The uh, NAACP and CORE and all of them came down and we, and Yuhuru Ilo group came down. Hayes Jones, who was an Olympic hurdler out of uh, Pontiac, Michigan, uh, had, had won the, uh, had took a gold medal in 1960 in Rome. He was running the last leg. We beat that motherfucker upside the head with a picket sign. Said, man, we've been running for the white man too long. When he got ready to make his last leg downtown, we disrupted the entire uh, celebration. Um, and what happened was that. Who'd you have filming? We didn't have nobody filming. We didn't have nobody. We didn't even have a camera back in those days. Just had a picket sign. So anyway, uh, uh, after the thing was over and. Uh, I went on back to work, at, excuse me, I made a transition from Woolworths to Ford Motor Company in September of 63. So I was working at Ford at the time on afternoon shift. We had a demonstration that morning. When I got home from, uh, when I got home from work, uh, not that first day, but the second day, I heard from John and Luke and them. They told us that uh, the prosecutor had got in touch with them, all the heads of these organizations, and had them come downtown and apologize for disrupting this uh, rally. So CORE and uh, NAACP and all of them went down to apologize, Urban League. And we sent them letters saying, we don't apologize for shit that black people do. Anything, you owe us apologize, apology. Anyway, I got home the next night, it flashing all over TV at warrants of my arrest and stuff. They'd already snatched the other guys out of school, off of campus and shit. They couldn't find me because I was out of the plant. So I went down and turned myself in. We was arrested for disturbing the peace. Uh, but the underlay was, we suppose it was born during the playing of the national anthem. So that was the way they were gonna build a case because we didn't apologize. So we were gonna be charged. So that case went on, believe it or not, for about three years. Who represented uh, you? Uh, we had Milton Henry, uh, Reverend, uh, Attorney Milton Henry. They gave us a black judge. We only had one black judge at, at Recorder's Court. That was Reverend Davenport. I mean, Judge Davenport, they gave him they gave us his black ass, and they found a black prosecutor, Eagleton, they gave him, so they, they wiped the racial, <laughs> they, they did away with the racial contradiction, you know, by, by the case. But we finally uh, got a hung jury out of the thing. Uh, they kept getting hung juries and coming back at us, and we finally beat it, but they were, they were trying to stick us with uh, uh, booing during the playing of the National Is Anthem. That, uh, Misdemeanor, it wasn't a felony, but they made a big case out of it. And we fought it out, you know. Uh, it's kind of important. But that was my first little scrape with the law. I mean, what was, uh, did you have, at that point, uh, newspaper or news? Um, we didn't have nothing. Did correspondence cover that at all? No. no. We didn't have nothing. We didn't have no coverage except what the newspapers put in now. That's all we had. Matter of fact, that's all that exists today is a bunch of newspaper clippings I got, you know. Uh, talking about the case itself. But anyway, that was a- And the uh, mayor on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. But that was that was the first big uh, 
that 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 was our first big uh, tackle tackling with the uh, city officials, uh, and we didn't get to Olympic Games. You know, we I guess it was fortunate that we didn't because you know they ended up going to Mexico City in '68, and that's when all the protests and stuff broke out. You know, they I don't know what would have happened had it been here. You know, it's kind of thing to see because you know you figure '68 King was killed. And you had Olympic Games here in the state somewhere? I don't know. Hmm. You know, so it would have been different. But anyway, that was that was that incident uh, in '63.